In this video, we explain the role and operation of a processor and its major components, including the ALU, control unit, clock, and the various registers. Here we see a highly abstracted view of the processor. On the left, we see the various input and output devices, and on the right, we see main memory and RAM. Let's take the lid off the processor now and take a look inside. Here we see the various components inside the processor that you need to be aware of for the exam and how they're connected. The component we're discussing will be shown in green. So let's start with the control unit in the bottom right hand corner. This coordinates all CPU activities. It directs flow of data between the CPU and other devices. It accepts the next instruction, decodes it, handles its execution, and stores the resulting data back in memory or registers. It sends memory read and write requests to main memory via the control bus, plus other command and control signals such as bus requests, bus grants, and interrupt requests. It makes extensive use of status registers and the clock. It effectively communicates and coordinates with all parts of the CPU, as represented by the blue lines. Next, let's look at the program counter in the top left. Now, this register holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. Now, this could be the next instruction in a sequence of instructions, or it could be the address to jump to if the current instruction is a command to jump or branch, and we'd copy that from the current instruction register. That would happen in a programming sense if you'd written something like an if statement. It has a very close relationship with the memory address register. At the start of every new fetch decode execute cycle, the address held in the program counter is copied into the memory address register. So let's now take a look at the memory address register. This holds the address of the memory location from which data on instruction is to be fetched from or which data has to be written to. And it sends this to main memory down the connecting address bus. The memory buffer register temporarily stores data that is read from or about to be written to memory. It is sometimes known as the memory data register, and it's often referred to as the gateway to the processor. All data to and from memory on the right must travel down the data bus and pass through the memory buffer register. The current instruction register, as its name suggests, holds the current instruction actually being executed. If the memory buffer register contains an instruction, its contents are copied to the current instruction register. It contains the opcode and the operands of the current instruction. Opcode plus operand together equals an instruction. For example, a machine language instruction to load the contents of location 1000 into the LU might look something like LDA 1000. LDA is the op code and the operand is the 1000. It's an instruction in two parts. The arithmetic logic unit or LU performs arithmetic and logic operations on data. Arithmetic operations on fixed and floating point numbers include adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing. It can also carry out left and right bitwise shift operations and Boolean logic comparisons. It often uses general purpose registers like the accumulator to temporarily hold the results of calculations. The accumulator, as we just said, is one of several general purpose registers that modern CPUs include. 
data or control information is often stored in them. The CPU may have many general purpose registers for storing temporary data while instructions or calculations are being carried out. Typically, the more general purpose registers a processor has, the faster it will operate. The results of calculations carried out by the ALU can temporarily be stored here. The status register contains information about the state of the processor. Individual bits are implicitly or explicitly read and or written by the machine code instructions executing on the processor. These bits can be thought of as flags and you set them on or off as appropriate. These flags can then be checked at any point to determine various statuses. The clock is an electronic unit that synchronizes related components by generating pulses at a constant rate. The clock speed, measured in hertz, is the frequency at which the internal clock generates these pulses. Typically, the higher the clock rate, the faster the computer will work. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What are the major components of a processor and what do they do? Well, they're all the components you need to know that are listed in the specification. But if you look on the internet and read around, you'll find a number of other components which haven't been listed here. So just for completeness, we're going to go over three components that aren't strictly in the AKA specification, which are still really useful to know about for a better understanding of the CPU. And they are the decode unit, the cache and the interrupt register. So the decode unit, in essence, is a piece of logic that's presented with a sequence of bits that have been fetched from memory. In an abstract way, you can think of it like a lookup table. It prepares the execution of an instruction by looking up the binary operation code in its table so the CPU knows what to do. The commands available in the decode unit will be specific to the instruction set architecture of that processor. We also have the interrupt register, referred to as the interrupt control register. It is routinely checked by the CPU to see if there's an interrupt waiting to be processed. If there is, a software process called the interrupt service routine interrupts the current active process. An interrupt can come from many sources. A basic example would be a routine that handles keyboard events, such as the pressing or releasing of a key. You'll learn more about interrupts in another part of the course. And finally, we have cache. This is a small area of memory often located on or near the CPU, providing fast access to frequently used instructions and data. Cache is typically graded as level 1, 2 or 3. Level 1 is usually part of the CPU chip itself and is the smallest but the fastest to access. Level 2 and 3 caches are bigger than level 1, located between the CPU and RAM. Sometimes level 2 is built into the CPU with level 1. Level 2 and 3 caches take slightly longer to access than level 1, but as we've said, they can contain more data. All cache is physically closer to the CPU than RAM and faster to access, but smaller in capacity.